share with you the whole process for cutting and prepping a group of cards. Now, I really like today's card design. One, because you can make up a lot of cards quickly with it. Two, it allows you to use both sides of your designer paper and use up some of that paper in your collection. Now, as we go through here, I'm going to be sharing lots of tips and tricks for saving time on your card making projects and just a few other helpful tricks. So I'm Hannah Hellman. Thanks for being here. Let's get started. Here you can see some of the main products we're going to be using on today's cards. We have some of the Euro Peach designer paper, which is so, so pretty. The Pansy Patch stamp set I pulled out for a really nice greeting in it. And the main focus of these cards is going to be using the Dragonfly Garden stamp set and the Dragonfly's punch. Now we're also going to use the Label Me Lovely punch on this. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is prepare my card bases. So I'll show you some tips and tricks for doing that. So here I have my trimmer. I love the Stampin' Up! trimmer because it allows me to cut and score using the same trimmer. So I have my scoring blade, my cutting blade. So what I like to do to prepare my card bases is first to score the entire piece. I'm going to line it up over here at four and a quarter. And I've made marks on here, as you can see, that help me know where to line everything up. So this lighter blade is the scoring blade. So I'm going to go down and score that entire sheet of cardstock. Now I can flip it the other way at five and a half, use the cutting blade and cut that in half. So I have two card bases prepared really quickly. We are going to be making up 12 cards today. So I am going to prepare six of these while I'm at it. And you do have to be careful. Here's, here's a what not to do. You have to be careful not to have that cutting blade in the way when you're scoring. So I will grab another piece of Calypso Coral to replace that one. We'll start over with it. Score first. Turn it and cut. So I'm curious if you have tips and tricks for preparing your card bases. I love, uh, last year sometime, I went through and I prepped a whole bunch of card bases. I have some in each color that I keep in a little basket beside my craft table. So it makes it so easy for me to be able to pull them out when I'm ready to craft. And when I know, oh, I want a balmy blue card base. Well, I don't have to go find my balmy blue card stock. I can just reach into that basket that is really handy and pull one out. Then when I get low, if I see that I only have one or two left, then I go ahead and grab a few more pieces of that color of cardstock and refill it. So that next time I want one, it is going to be there and be ready. One more for that one that I made my mistake on. There are no mistakes in card making, right? Just opportunities for uh, opportunities for creativity. Is that what we should call it? Okay, so my card bases are ready. Now let's go ahead and we are going to cut down some designer papers. Like I said, this card design allows you to use both sides of your designer papers. So I've picked out three that I like both sides of. Now, if you don't like both sides of yours, that's okay. You don't have to use the front and the back from the same piece. You can use the front from one and the back from another. But what I am going to do is actually stack all three of these on top of each other. So here is a really helpful time-saving tip. And I am going to line these up folded my arm out here you can see I really like how nice and long this measuring uh, the ruler is over here I'm gonna line these up at 11 inches which means I'm going to cut off one inch now I do want to make sure since I have three here I am gonna move these before I move this that way if it did not cut all the way through I can go ahead and run that blade along there again and cut one more time 
I'm going to flip this and do the same thing, line it up at 11 and cut. Now these pieces are going to be scraps I can use on another project. So now I have an 11 inch square. What I want to do now is I'm going to line this up at eight and a half. Cut. I'm going to flip it again, line it up at eight and a half. Cut. Now I'm going to trim this into four and one quarter inch squares. So I'm lining this up at four and a quarter. I have always loved math, which really helps when I'm doing some of my card projects to be able to do, do my cutting measurements quickly in my head. But if you are not the same way, that is okay. You can always figure these out uh, just by watching along here what I'm doing. Or, you know, you can use a calculator to do some of that math if you need to. Okay, now these are prepped. We want to have 12 of these squares that measure four and a quarter inches on each side. Now these pieces, we want to trim so that they measure four and a quarter inches as well. So they're going to measure two and a half by four and a quarter. So this one, I believe, measures eight and a half along the top, and I'm going to be cutting it in half. So now I have six of those prepped. Now this was the one I cut off first. It's a little bit longer. So I will cut these down to four and a quarter. Do another one. There's a little handy tick trick. You don't even have to raise up this cutting arm if you don't want to. You can just slide your papers underneath and it saves a little bit of time. These are going to be extra. And here are the rest of our pieces that measure two and a half by four and a quarter. So on these, what I want to do is prepare these into little tags or banners. And I am actually going to use this side on all of these, I believe, which I actually don't have to decide that right now. But what I want is a banner that has the bottom trimmed out, looks like a little ribbon or a banner. And right now, I do not have a punch in my collection that will uh, do two and a half inch pieces. So I'm going to show you a little trick, which is really easy. What you do is fold it in half. Now you don't really want to crease it down here but just hold it loosely together and just trim it with your scissors. Now, these are not all going to be exactly the same, and I'm okay with that because handmade cards aren't supposed to be exactly the same. And if I get one that's a little bit off, I'll just trim it a second time and make it look a little bit better. I don't know about you. I do not get too worked up about things being perfect with my card making. You know, I used to be more of a perfectionist, and that just isn't very much fun. We need to learn to appreciate the imperfections in our card making. That's what makes them special, the uniqueness, the fact that they're one of a kind. So I could probably be doing two of these at a time if I wanted to. And if you want to, I'll show you another little uh, modification you can make if you want. You could cut these out with a deeper cut if you want to. So if you like that better, you can do that. So just a few more and we will have our tags prepped. So I'm really excited to share these with you. I... No, I am not the only one that sometimes needs to make up quite a few cards and do it in just a few minutes. So that's why I thought it would be fun to do this with you and share some tips. Two more. I feel a little bit like I'm in an extra bus size video. Just two more. You can do it. Except this is, this is way more fun, in my opinion. You let me know. Do you like, which one do you like more, crafting or exercising? 
Okay, we got a little off topic, but we have our banners prepared. So our designer paper pieces are prepared. The next thing we are going to do is stamp and punch some dragonflies. And these will go really fast. I just love this dragonfly punch. I'm going to do some in Calypso Coral, and I think I may want a few in some green as well. So while I have these out, I'll do some stamping for that. So I've mounted one of the dragonflies onto this punch. Now, this punch does have a second dragonfly that you can use. So you can use the same one. You can use different ones. Just for fun, I am going to stamp twice without re-inking. So what this gives us is a little bit of variation in that color, which I love. I think it makes it look a little bit more realistic. And you can see here, I am alternating the direction I am stamping those dragonflies. The reason for that is it saves paper. So these strips measure two inches wide. It is the perfect width. If you wanna make them a little bit wider, you can. but it is the perfect width to be able to fit those dragonflies stamped both directions. You can do these in lots of colors. I am just keeping mine pretty basic because when I don't have to clean my stamp off, that saves some time and we're not switching colors. This one, if you keep them close together, you may even fit one more dragonfly in there. Okay, now I will clean my stamp this time, and I'm going to stamp on these green ones down here. We'll have a few green dragonflies ready as well. And then punching is just my absolute favorite. I, I love using die cuts on my projects because they're just absolutely beautiful. But punching I love because it is just so quick and easy. So let's get to that punching. We need to punch these dragonflies, and then the very next step will be to punch our tags for the card. I guess I better grab the right punch. I grabbed the tag punch at first, and that was not going to be the right one for this. So line it up. I haven't shown a lot with punches lately in my videos, which is funny. I think a lot of times I punch and prepare those pieces ahead of time and I don't really show and talk about them but you can line it up I like to do this upside down as you can see so that I can see exactly where I'm going to punch and you can squeeze it I'm right-handed so I do this right-handed but you can squeeze it to where it's holding the paper in place but not actually punching through yet and make sure it's lined up where you want it and then if it is lined up where you want it then just punch on through And these Stampin' Up! punches are the absolute best. I'll, uh, I'll do a little sales plug at the moment for why I love these punches. One, they hold up forever. Uh, if they do ever go a little bit dull, I just punch through either several layers of aluminum foil or you can use those aluminum aluminum baking pans you cut the edges off and can punch through them a few times and it sharpens them back up you have to be really careful with that that you don't cut your hands with it but really sharpens these punches back up quickly you can also punch through some wax paper which just kind of lubricates them a little bit makes them work like new but these things last forever and one of the other things i really love about them is they fold down flat so they have this little locking button and you can lock it up and they store so nice and small compared to so many other punches. So get these dragonflies punched. I probably have extras here. I may just punch three of these strips for now. Keep the other ones on hand in case I need them. I didn't really count to make sure I have the right number. I think I'll have some extras. So We'll get this one punched and then we are almost to the assemble stage where we get to see the results of our work. But next we will prepare those tags and that's going to go really fast. Probably even faster than these dragonflies. 
So for the tags, I am using this Label Me Lovely Punch. And I want to do these on some white paper. So the measurement for this that I need is I need some two and a half inch strips. So I'm actually going to cut at the five here, which is going to give me one big one. Now I'm going to cut my five and a half by my measuring it at the two and a half inch mark. This gives me three strips that I'm going to go down and punch out quickly with this punch. And here you can see right here why I love a good punch. Look how quickly you can make these. So I can get five out of one 11 inch piece of paper. And it looks like I could have cut these strips just a little bit narrower if I'd wanted to, maybe two and a quarter inches. So that could save you a little bit of paper. So that should be five. And then I'm planning on making 12 cards. Let's do 11, 12, and one for good measure in case I don't stamp perfectly because you know what? This is real life and I don't always stamp perfectly. So we'll lay these out and then I'll go through quickly and stamp the greetings on. I think this is a really nice label shape and this stamp right here I just love. It says wishing you a little extra happiness just because you're you. So you could use this stamp. This is that one from that Pansy Patch stamp set. You could use this stamp for so many occasions. You could use it for birthdays just because. Thank you. This would be a great one you could make up and not stamp the inside, which is actually what I'm going to do today. A lot of these I will use for my customer thank yous, which if you do not shop with me, I would love to send you a thank you package in the mail when you place your first order with me. So just let me know if you'd like to see a Stampin' Up! catalog and you haven't seen one, you can contact me. I'd be happy to send one to you. I'll also mention a little bit about the discount opportunity. So you, if you are interested in a permanent discount on your products, you can actually sign up with Stampin' Up! as a demonstrator, but you don't have to do classes. You don't have to sell any products. Uh, it's just a really good chance to get a discount on your products. And I have a really fun group of women known as my team. We are the Sassy Stampers. And uh, we do a lot of fun things. We do card making challenges in our Facebook group. We have a monthly Zoom meeting where we, and I, I gotta come up with a new name besides meeting because we, uh, we get together, we talk about what's happening with Stampin' Up! And we always do a fun craft project. So we send out the materials ahead of time for what to prepare. Like these are the pieces you'll need. This is what you need to cut. And then either myself or one of our other team members demonstrates how to put it together and we have been having some of the neatest projects here lately and then quarterly once every three months we actually have just a big craft night where we make several projects we send out the materials list ahead of time of course and just get together and craft which is a lot of fun so here you can see i am folding and creasing the card bases to do this, I like to fold it over, make sure my corners line up, and then I use my bone folder over here at this edge. I always used to use it up here on this edge because that's what I saw other people doing, and then I discovered they lay a lot flatter if I use it here in the way that you can see. little secret when I am just making cards on my own I don't crease I, I don't score for those bases I always do that when I am prepping card bases for customers and people for my classes because I know a lot of you card makers prefer that but I actually don't and it works out just fine I just have to make sure my corners line up when I fold it over before I use that bone folder. Look how flat those lay. I just love that. 
Now I need to flip them all over this way to make sure they're going to open the right way. And I think first what we will do is go ahead and attach our designer paper pieces. Now I wanna make sure I have the print up that is going to be face up. And then I'm going to flip these over to the back. And here is one of my time saving tricks when I am doing quite a few cards at once. I like to lay out a lot of my pieces. A few of these may go off screen. I'm going to lay all of these out and put adhesive on them at one time. So just really allows me to go through and do this quickly. So I'll put one strip down each side. Sometimes I go ahead and put a third strip down the middle. It depends on how big the piece is and how how, uh, what am I trying to say? Oh, how heavy it is. Sometimes with the heavier cardstocks or if it's embossed, I'll go ahead and add some extra adhesive just to make sure it's going to hold. So I'm using my seal adhesive for this, which I really like. Tip with the seal adhesive, if you have tried it, my best tip for this is to use it with a light touch. I know every once in a while I'll have a little struggle with it. And what I find is when I struggle with it, I just push harder. And when I push harder, it makes everything worse. So best tip is use a light touch. Okay, so here's what I'm going to start doing is attaching these designer paper pieces to the top of that card base. So I'm going to leave a little strip at the top of each one where I can still see that card base. Some of these may need to be at a certain orientation. This peach paper, so as you can see on some of these, I'm going to leave the peaches so that we can see them. Here's some little peaches on this one, but I really like that on the back sides, we have these other prints. We have some floral prints. We have some stripes and polka dots. So if you don't want a whole bunch of peach paper, a whole bunch of peach projects, you always have that back side to choose from of a different print. That's, that's one of my, well, I have lots of favorite things about Stampin' Up! paper. But one of the things I love is that double-sided option that the one side is kind of a more bold, specialized print, such as the peach, or maybe it's penguins and foxes, for example, with another paper pack we have right now. But when you flip it over to the back side, you have some kind of more basic print that you could use for lots of occasions, like the stripes or the polka dots. Our paper is also just the best in general, the quality of it, the weight of it. It is so, so nice. If you like to make 3D projects at all, our paper is the best for 3D projects because it's just nice and sturdy. And for your cards, you don't like to make a card that when you set it up to display it, it's going to sag over time. The cardstock is nice and heavy, so you put that time into making those cards for people and they can display them for a long time and not have to worry about them sagging. Okay, now I am going to put adhesive on these banner pieces that we prepared and I'm debating if the this side that is up is the side I want for all of these and I think it is. Let's see, we're going to go through one at a time. We'll put that one up, that one up, that one up. We'll do a few like that. Oh, sure, we'll do that. So I'm going to lay out these banners just like I did a minute ago with my bigger pieces. We will run adhesive down all of these. And then we will find a card that looks nice with each one of them to lay them onto. So I talked a little bit about our seal tape. I'll mention our seal plus tape, which comes in the same type of dispenser. Here's a seal plus. It's just a little bit darker blue when you look at it. The seal plus, 
I might actually like the Seal Plus a little bit better. It's a really nice and strong adhesive. With my seal, the way I like to use it is I pull it back and then when I get to my stopping point, I slide to the side. If I don't slide to the side, I get a little gummy strip that pulls and is funny. So as you can see, every time I stop, I just slide to the side. It works really nicely. Now, if you don't want to have to get used to that, uh, once you're used to it, it's really easy. But if you don't want to have to think about that, the Seal Plus is really nice. And like I said, it's very strong. So I am going to start flipping these over one at a time. Let's make a little bit of space here so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to put these banners on right about there, okay? Now, I don't know which pieces are going to look nice with which cards, so I'm just going to start doing this, and hopefully it turns out all right. Usually things turn out pretty all right. If I don't think about them too hard. So we are going to have lots of different ones. We probably will not have any two cards that look just alike. So as you can see, every one of these so far, I am just putting it on the one that I pull out and they have all looked great so far. I have three left. Since I only have three left, I do want to make sure that these are going to look nice. See, I don't want this print on top of this one. So I'll put this one here. Two left. And fantastic. We'll put this floral over here so that the, we don't have a floral on top of a floral. Now I'll put the polka dots here. Okay, so here is where it really gets fun. We're going to put some of the dragonflies on then we're going to put the tags on then we are going to put some more of the dragonflies on and some embellishments to finish these off so we are really making some great progress on these cards and we have only been at it for just a few minutes so i am pulling out the butterfly the butterflies the dragonflies that i had stamped off on so the ones that are a little bit more muted in color so there's five. Here's six. I think I'm going to be a little bit short. We'll do three of these ones that are green. And it looks like I do need these that I had not punched out yet. So we'll finish that. So what do you think about this dragonfly set? Is this one that you would use in your collection? It is one that I have used a ton. I really like it. I like that it's different. You know, we see quite a few butterflies. We see quite a few flowers. But this is something, it's just different. And because it has the punch, because it's so quick and easy to use, a lot of times I pull it out when I don't have a lot of time and I'm trying to make something up and all of the projects I have made with it have been just absolutely beautiful so what I'm going to do now I have I have my seal plus here this time I am just going to put a teeny tiny bit of adhesive right in the center of there and because I have this seal plus I will not have to worry about these coming off the seal would probably hold as well but since I'm just putting a tiny bit, like I said, I decided to use that, that seal plus. So I'm going to put these on up here about somewhere close to the corner of the banner piece. And I like the little wing extending up over the top of the designer paper. So we'll put these on. The next step after this will be, let's do a green one. Next step after this will be the tags, like I said. I 
This is something I do a lot if I have a piece upside down and I want to pick it up quickly without having to fumble with my fingers. I just lightly touch where the adhesive is, picks it up right there on my finger really quickly and easily. And this is one I was going to try not to do. I may end up with some of these, but I was going to try not to end up with the polka dotted dragonflies on the polka dotted print here. I'm sure I will have some of them because I haven't been paying attention, but we'll do this. These will both end up with green ones. Now next, let's prepare these tags. Again, we are going to flip them upside down, lay them all out. This just makes it so much faster. Put all that adhesive on at one time. Now every once in a while I see comments different places about, well, these are handmade cards. They're not supposed to be uh, produced in an assembly line or something like that. And here's a quick tip. I'm going to use the seal on these and be, again, because it is so strong. I'm just going to put one strip down the center of these. So back to my comment. So of course, like I said, these are all going to be one of a kind. They're all going to be different. They all have different paper prints. So I want to put this on. I like to cover up the dragonfly tail, but I also want to leave it hanging off over here a little bit on the edge of the banner. So no matter what with we do with these, they're all going to be one of a kind and the people you give them to are going to appreciate them regardless of whether you made one at a time or you made 15 at a kind. So it's just a nice way that you can save some time and be able to impact more people with your beautiful handmade creations by making up several at a time. Just, I know I already said this, but I just love this stamp from this Pansy Patch stamp set. I think the font is really pretty, and I really like the words. So just a few more of these, and then we'll get the rest of our dragonflies attached. Now our dragonflies, the next ones we put on, we are going to use a foam dimensional underneath. So you could use a few foam dimensionals, of course, if you want to. But I find that one under the center of these dragonflies works really well. Did I lose a card? Oh yeah, I forgot. I made up one extra of this. In case I messed any up. And amazingly, I didn't mess any up. So, okay, we'll bring in the rest of the dragonflies. Lay them upside down. Put a foam dimensional underneath each one. And I have a tip to share with you for this, which is using a really handy tool. If you don't have one of these, I really encourage you to try one out. So this is the Take Your Pick tool. It has two different ends, and on this end, there are two different attachments that you can pull out and remove. And each attachment has two different ends. So uh, there's really a lot you can do with this. I do have a video that is all about this take your pick tool if you want to take a look at it. But when I apply my foam dimensionals, if you have arthritis or if you have a hard time getting your hands to work sometimes, this is the absolute best tool. I just poke it through the surface of that dimensional, lift it off. It takes a few times to kind of get the hang of it, but once you have the hang of it, it works really well. Lift it off, and then you're going to see here in just a second how else you can use it. Actually, my next couple of steps, you'll see different ways to use this handy tool. Okay, so I have a dimensional on each one of them. Like I said, if you want to, you can add a couple. You could add one under each wing. Might be good if you prefer that. Now you can poke through that paper backing and lift those off. And you can even do this without having to pull them off of that tip. So you can see my paper backing pieces are just building up and building up and building up. Did I already do that one? I've lost track of where I am here. And if you can see my hand, you can see that I have one of these stuck to my hand. Yep, this one still needs removed. Did I get that one? All right, I think these are all ready. I may have missed one, but. 
So now we will go through and just add this dragonfly over here facing this way. A little bit different angle and with its tail hanging down here over the tag. So when I get to the ones with green dragonflies, I'll put the green ones on. Oh, here's one. You could mix up the colors, of course, if you like. Wrong color. Here's a green one. You know, I send out a lot of cards certain times of the month when I'm sending my customer thank yous and when I'm recognizing my team members. I love to send out little rewards and things to my team members for the different things they're doing. Sometimes they're just surprises. Sometimes they're just prizes for joining in with our team meeting that month. Uh, whatever it is, I just I send out a lot of cards certain times of the month. So these are going to be some really nice ones to have on hand for when I need to send my next batch of cards. Okay, so we have come a long way. The last thing I am going to do is just add a few embellishments. And I am going to show you how to do this. And then I am going to do it off screen and you'll be able to see the final pictures here at the end. So I, again, I'm going to use my take your pick tool. This end has a little bit of blue adhesive in there and right now you can't see any of it. So I'm going to twist this just a touch. I'm going to wait a second and you may be able to see that that blue is coming out the end. So that is sticky and that makes it super easy to pick up my gems and put them on my project. So I like little groupings of three a lot of times. So I'm gonna put three right there. Looks like one hijacked on my hand. I'll get rid of that one. So you can see that one. Here I'll do a second one real quick. And then we will wrap this up. So thanks so much for joining in today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got some tips and tricks to help you be able to make up a lot of beautiful handmade cards in just a few minutes. So you can find the ordering links for all the products I used today in the video description below. You can also find a link to my blog for more information on this and tons of ideas and inspiration for your other projects. Please like and subscribe below and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here again helping you to handmake with love.